Horse so, film? Rob, let's start at the beginning. Sure. How did War Horse come about? Well, uh, on the video, you saw Tom Morris. Uh, when he started at the National Theatre of Great Britain in 2004 as an associate director, he already knew that he wanted to work with Handspring Puppet Company. Um, so he took some of his colleagues from the National down to South Africa, where Handspring is based, and they saw a show that was produced and created by Handspring and its artistic directors, Adrian Kohler and Basil Jones, and they were incredibly impressed by it, so it was really a matter of finding the right material. And uh, it was actually, as you saw from the video, Tom Morris's mother who suggested the novel by Michael Murpurgo, War Horse. So he read it and knew that this was the perfect material for these creative minds to come together and really create something truly special. And it was about 18 months later that the first productions of War Horse were being workshopped in the National Theatres in London. And what, share with us some of the, what are obvious challenges to presenting something like this on a stage. Yes, so this is a very challenging show to produce. I mean, how do we uh, uh, create the epic scale and convey the epic scale of uh, World War I? Um, how do we stage a full cavalry charge? But I think that the most challenging thing about the show is how do you make a show where the central character is a puppet? A puppet that doesn't sing or dance or speak or ice skate or anything like that. A, a puppet that is, in fact, a horse. And how do you get an audience to really care about this puppet and empathize with its story and follow his story, follow Joey's story? And I guess additionally, another challenge really is how do we bring Joey to life? Well, we have three actors that play this one character. And uh, during about the eight-week rehearsal process, eight-week rehearsal period, um, they learn to really uh, be a horse. They learn everything there is to, to know about horses. Like, I'm sure you all know so much about horses. Um, so the sounds they make, their behaviors, their patterns. Um, it's during that time they learn to work together as a team and really through sound and movement give this character a voice and give Joey life. Can you tell us more about the puppetry that goes on? I to can tell make you about the puppetry, but I think I have a friend here that uh, is probably going to be a better example of how the puppet works. Welcome, Joey! Ladies and gentlemen, Joey, the war horse. <laughs> yeah, he's going to get to know the space a little bit. He's, gonna, he's walking the course. He's walking the course. I'm not sure. He might be eyeing that jump over there. Oh. Don't do it, might Joey. Be a little high for him. Do a plant. <laughs> I think he's sizing up the, the height there. <laughs> You're tall enough, Joey. <laughs> no. <laughs> Maybe he's Did hungry. He eat? Maybe he's hungry. Did uh, he have dinner? <laughs> <laughs> I think I have a sugar cube here. We'll pay for that fern. I'm sorry. Oh. Joey has a sweet tooth like a lot of horses do. So, uh, if Dennis, if you just want to stand right over here. I would have brought a Hershey's Kiss if you told me. And just hold your hand out. You can smell it. You can Come smell here, Joey. sugar a mile away. Come here, Joey. Come on, boy. Come get it. It's okay, Joe. Come on, Joe. Come on. It's Hershey sugar. Yeah. That's what we make the chocolate from. I think you got it, Joey. I think you're getting my arm now. <laughs> Good boy. Good boy. Good boy, Joey. That's all I have. That's all he gave me was one. 
Well, as you can see, Joey's design is both incredibly creative and, and, and innovative and beautiful. Yeah, I'm talking about you, that's right. <laughs> as you can see as well, it takes uh, three actors, puppeteers, to operate Joey. We have them uh, separated uh, between the head puppeteer, what we call the heart puppeteer, and finally we, what we call the hind puppeteer. Now, each puppeteer is charged with a physical or technical task and also what we call an emotional indicator. Uh, so for the head... <laughs> he knows we're talking about him. <laughs> He's trying to put his two cents in here. So for the head puppeteer, their technical or uh, physical task is all about where Joey's looking or his uh, sight line, eye line. Um, by moving and manipulating the level and the positioning of the head, the head puppeteer gives us an idea of what Joey's looking at and by extension what he may be thinking. The emotional indicator for the head puppeteer is all about the ears. And so the ears, they rotate just like a horse's do, 180 degrees either together or separately, and their positioning, as you know, can indicate different emotional states in Joey. So if the ears are forward, they can be curious, something's alerted him, maybe he thinks there's more sugar, or maybe if they're back, if the ears are back, we get a sense of Joey being threatened or agitated. So let's calm him down. Calm down, boy. It's okay. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. That's a good boy. There you go. Moving on to the heart puppeteer. Now, the heart puppeteer's technical or physical task is all about Joey's weight. And now, if you look at Joey, it looks as if the puppet legs take on the weight of the horse, when in actuality, it's the puppeteer's legs that support the weight of Joey. So every step, every hop, every stomp that Joey makes, really, <laughs> as such, it's really up to that heart puppeteer to make sure that there's push and pressure and weight in all of those steps. Now, the emotional indicator for the heart puppeteer is one of the smallest mechanisms in the puppet, but one of the most important, and that's breath. By changing his body position and by bending his knees slightly in a plie, um, we get the idea of breath in Joey and by extension that Joey is alive. And again, his emotional indicator, um, the different qualities of breath can indicate different emotional states that Joey is in. So if the breaths are short and high, again, there's something that he might be agitated by. And if they're low and slow and raggedy, we get the idea that Joey is exhausted, maybe after a long day of working in the fields. And last but not least, we have the hind puppeteer. Now, the hind puppeteer is in charge of the back legs and the tail. And the, the material of the tail and of the mane is this great material that we call, that's right, I'm talking about you. Um, there's a great material that we call, uh, that is Tyvek, that they use in construction. Um, we were looking for a, the perfect material, and we found this really great fine foam substance, but it was highly flammable, and obviously, we couldn't use that. No, we couldn't use a flammable material, no. <laughs> so we used Tyvek, which is uh, this construction material that has a great weight to it, has a great sound quality, and it looks great on stage as well. Now, the tail is the emotional indicator of the hind puppeteer, and its positioning can indicate different levels of tension in Joey and other things as well. So if the tail is high and raised, we get a sense of higher level of tension, and if it's low, and maybe just casually swinging from side to side, we get a lower level of tension in Joey. That's right, he's shaking it out. Um, maybe he's ready to try that jump in a bit. We'll see. Uh, now, the physical or technical task of the hind puppeteer um, is related to the heart puppeteer in terms of weight. Um, the, uh, we get a sense of the hind puppeteer's ability to put weight on the back legs because there's actually no weight going through this back leg. It's all through his legs, the puppeteer's legs. Also, the hind puppeteer is in charge of the proper gait or footfalls of the horse. As you can see, the heart puppeteer and the hind puppeteer they are strapped inside the horse, and the heart puppeteer can't see behind him, but the hind puppeteer can. He can see where the feet have to fall in order for it to be correct. So we learned uh, the, the footfalls on a count system. So if we, uh, let's put them on a treadmill here. So on a four count walk, you see it's up to the hind to make that correct looking. Or what we have in a two count trot, And uh, the more complicated six-count gallop. Oh, there it goes. 
<laughs> All right, Joe. All right, here we go. He's, he's riled up. He had, he had a lot sugar of sugar high. today, a lot of Hershey's, Hershey's chocolate today. So, so let, let's, let's see if we can't give him a, like a little way up, boy, huh? Want to give him a little way up? Here we go. Way up, boy, way up. <laughs> he loves to perform for a crowd. So right now we're going to have some of our friends come in uh, from the Canadian Cowgirls and, and their friends. Joey, look. Look, Joey. <laughs> Joey loves meeting new friends, new horse friends, new people friends. Well, we're really pretty girlfriends. Exactly. <laughs> So Rob, is Joey the only puppet in the play, or are there more? Joey is not the only puppet in the play. Uh, there's another full-size horse that we have named Topthorn. That's Joey's friend. And uh, Topthorn is a little, actually, a little bigger than Joey. And that is also a, a puppet that's operated by three puppeteers. We have a whole bunch of bird puppets, uh, crows and swallows. And we have a very sassy goose puppet uh, that thinks the show is about her and should be called War Goose. Um, we have soldier puppets. We have two workhorse puppets that are operated by two puppeteers each. And their names are Coco and Heine. And then we have four uh, single person operated horses, mustering horses, as we call them. And in our cast, we lovingly name them after the Kardashian sisters <laughs> Chloe, Kim, Courtney, and there's another one as well. Does, um, how much does Joey weigh, like, without the guys? Like just uh, every, every puppet is handmade in South Africa, so there's slight variations on their dimensions and their weight. But uh, basically, Joey is about 100 to 120 pounds um, without a rider. Um, in the show, Joey and Topthorn both take riders. So it's the 120 pounds plus what we have is 150 max. That's what we have for rider max weight. And that weight is split between the, mainly between the heart and the hind puppeteer. Um, so Joey's uh, aluminum frame uh, cage underneath, and that's covered with that bent cane or like bamboo, and it's hand bent. And then there's a mesh skin, and then that material that I talked about earlier, the Tyvek, and that makes up the mane and the tail. And then we have leather ears and leather bindings as well. And then also these incredibly beautiful blown glass eyes, which are one of the hardest things to make for the puppet. They go through, I think it's like one out of ten actually get used because they have to have that special depth in them that you can only really get in the depth of a horse's eye. The light plays off of the Indeed, eyes. Indeed, yes. Well. Awesome. What about the visual is so stunning, but what about the sounds that he makes? Well, he's all, the sounds, sounds. all the sounds that you hear are, everyone thinks that, <laughs> everyone thinks that uh, sometimes that they're recorded sounds, um, but they're not. All the sounds that you hear are actually generated by the puppeteers themselves. So the, the puppeteers are mic'd inside the puppet and they make those sounds themselves. And the actual capacity for uh, a horse's lungs is about three times, I'm sure you all know this, three times uh, uh, three men, basically three grown men. And so we have three men that are actually able to make these sounds and it's nice that these sounds get to be layered and one person can start a sound and another person can continue that sound and you get a really nice depth of sound when uh, the three men are able to make them together. Awesome. Absolutely awesome. Are we going to be able to separate these? <laughs> I think we're, we're going to have to, to we're going to have to go and uh, Ladies and gentlemen, I want to Make thank you friends. all for coming out tonight and sharing this wonderful experience with us. Thank you to the Pennsylvania National Horse Show for having us. Thank you to the Canadian Cowgirls for giving Joey four new girl, five new girlfriends. Uh, <laughs> have a wonderful evening, everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you. Enjoy. Uh, we're certainly looking forward to a wonderful evening here, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Of course, we uh, started it off on the uh, right foot, or four feet, I should say, there with 
Again, Joey from Warhorse. And don't forget, at the Hershey Theater, December 10th through 15th will be the uh, Tony Award-winning, worldwide sensational, uh, captivating production. And hopefully...